All right. Defensive players. Here we go. All right. I, same thing as before. If you listen on podcasts, I will read it out to you. If uh, And then we'll get Zach's thoughts on it. So Zach's list for the Defensive Player of the Year Power Rankings. He has number one, Abdul Carter, then Caleb Downs, Will Johnson, Jabbar Muhammad, the Oregon. He's at Oregon now. He's no longer at Washington. Uh, fifth is Jay Higgins, Mason Graham, Tyreen Powell, Jay Sean Barham, Jordan Birch, and then Davison Igbenosen slash Jordan Hancock. I'm sure Zach will have thoughts on that for us here in just a second. Mm -hmm. My list, Will Johnson, Caleb Downs, Jay Higgins, Mason Graham, Dylan Thieneman, Zenzel Burke, Abdul Carter, Sebastian Castro, Ricardo Hallman, Tyleek Williams. Again, this is not a list of us ranking the best defensive players, okay? This is who we feel like has the best chance Top 10 best chance to win the award. Zach, your thoughts on your list and explain the Igbenos and Hancock for us. Yeah, so I I really think Denzel Burke is not, maybe not the, just the best corner on Ohio State. I think he might be the best corner in the country, including like Will Johnson. And I know people come at me for that. Um, well, they were on the All-American team together. I mean, it yeah. was, and then Morrison was on the second team. Everybody's been talking about Morrison is better, but. Yeah. Burke was there instead I'll, of Morrison. I'll say all three of those corners are great. Yeah. They're phenomenal. Oh, yeah. They're all fantastic. I think Denzel Burke is not going to get thrown at. And so he's just not going to have the stats. But I think Igbenosen, But you don't get the stats as a corner, right? Like, Well, I'm talking yeah. about like picks, Unless you recall pass, Holman. Okay, yeah. I yeah, see picks, passes pass, pass defended. Like, I, I think Igbenosen and Hancock are going to be in a more plays. Okay. So that's, which is not to say like, so I think Burke, well, you have to throw it to somebody, right? Right. <laughs> you just check it down to your running back every time. <laughs> right. And I think, I think they're going to go after, they're going to try to go after, after Hancock and Egmanosin. And I think people are going to realize that's also a bad idea. Um, you, I know we talked off air I, and I'll just say, I think Abdul Carter, I'm really high on him and I think he could have, a double digit sack year, even if Penn state goes nine and three, which I think that's who we, where we had them together. Um, and I think he might flash enough where it may not matter what their record is. He's just dominant on the field, which I'm not sure you can say that about anybody else in the conference. Like I, I think like Caleb Downs actually might be the one exception, but like Will Johnson, you can throw you can throw away from him. Um, Jabbar Muhammad, you can throw away from him. Mason Graham, I like I love Mason Graham, but like I don't know if defensive tackles are like the best fit for this award. I think actually edge rushers might be the best one, and he's going. I think he's going to be the best of the bunch. So I. I toyed with putting Jack Sawyer on here, but like he just hasn't had the sack numbers. JT Tuimoloau hasn't had the sack numbers. Um, I saw your comment, Brian. And that's why I wanted to say it. Um, I figure we acknowledge it now since you brought him up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, I think that was my thought process there. I think the thing with Defensive Player of the Year, and I'm curious how you you were thinking about it. It's typically gonna, it's typically going to be a high profile guy who flashes a lot who is the heartbeat of a defense. And so that's kind of how I just thought through it throughout, throughout my list. And I think that's two, two through 10. That was kind of my thinking. I think number one, I'm like, I think if there's a guy who can just wreck games, regardless of record, it's going to be Abdul Carter. Very possible. Yeah. So um, talk about Jack Sawyer really fast since Brian's comment is here. Uh, so the reason I didn't have Jack Sawyer on mine was because I don't know what it's similar to the running backs with Penn State, right? I don't know what it's going to look like trying to figure out who is the more dominant pass rusher between JT Tuimolowau and Jack Sawyer. Now, Jack Sawyer came on as the more dominant pass rusher to end the year last year, but is that going to continue or are they going to find ways for each of them to be able to get pass rushing ability? And since Jack Sawyer was more dominant last year, does that mean that he's going to get more attention? JT2 of the Molo does not get as much. So, I mean, Jack Sawyer is probably like, I think if I looked at my list, he's probably like 13th or 14th on my list. So it's not like he's off it completely. It's just one of those ones where like, I need to see what happens with this defense. And if Jack Sawyer turns into the guy 
that is uh, getting all those numbers. So, But I do agree, Brian. I think that he's going to have a, a good year this year. It just depends on does he have one all by himself or is it him and JT together having a really good year? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like – I'm just curious because I was trying to think of a good comp for Sawyer. Do you feel like Sam Hubbard is like a good camp comp for – Sawyer, or would you compare him to someone else? Um, Sam Hubbard sounds good. I think that he might have a little bit more star power than Sam Hubbard did. Who was Sam Hubbard on the line with? I feel like he was on a line with somebody. Was he, he wasn't on the line with Bosa, was he? I think he he was for a, a couple seasons. Okay. Um, he was with. Right. Uh, oh gosh, Taekwon Lewis was like okay. the bookend with him. Yeah. I, I always just felt like he was always an underrated, like very good second fiddle um, defensive end, but his talent wasn't really second fiddle. He just was kind of looked at it like that. Um, I think Jack Sawyer's looked at right now a little bit more as the first one, but I think last year people definitely looked at JT two of the Mola as the first one and then Jack Sawyer. So we'll see what happens with it. But yeah, that's a, that's a great name to bring up there, Brian, as somebody that could quickly enter into the top 10. Um mm-hmm. Dylan says here live on Boiler Express podcast. Love you. And yes, thank you, Dylan, for being here. And I put your guy up there, Dylan. All right. I want you to I want you to see that. I want you to know Dylan Thieneman's up there. Um, I think Dylan Thieneman is fantastic. And he is one of the guys. So let's talk about this for a second. He is one of the guys that is a likely position to win the award. Right. Yep. We talk about defensive ends, linebackers, safeties. Those are the guys who are most likely to win this award because those are the guys who get the tackles, the sacks, the interceptions. Usually Ricardo Holman led the nation or led, led the big 10. He might've led the nation. Oh, he leads the nation in returning players with interceptions this year. Uh, so he had a bunch of interceptions, but he was not getting hardly any talk for this award mm-hmm. last year. So even though you have a cornerback who is leading the nation or leading the conference at the very least, and interceptions, he's not even getting seriously considered for this award. Now, my thought process is he led the nations last year and are in yep. players returning this year and in interceptions. He has to get some love somewhere. Uh, and Dylan Thiedemann was second. So if he's going to be in the top five, you got to have Ricardo Holman up there somewhere. Um, but my thing with Abdul Carter, and I, I sound like a hater when I'm saying this, and I'm not trying to be a hater, but... Last year, what what was one of his biggest struggles? It was the tackling. It was the ability to finish and tackle guys. He would he could get in the right spot. He could do the right things. He had the athleticism to get there. But considering that was his weakness last year, is he really going to do a spectacular job? You know, fighting with players. You know, getting right up with players on the defensive line. I mean, when you're on the defensive mm-hmm. line, you meet a player right away. I mean, there's no like, I'm going to wait a second and then attack. You meet a player right away. Is yeah. he going to do as well with that as he did last year at the linebacker position? I think he has the athleticism to do so. Uh, I think he he's going to be an improved tackler. I think Tom Allen is going to bring that out, out of him. Not saying Manny Diaz did a bad job last year, but I just think that's something Tom Allen really focuses on. Uh, but I have questions in there. So yeah. I really like Abdul Carter. Don't get me wrong, but I have some questions about what this transition to defensive end looks like uh, and how that'll go. Yeah. And that's fair. I, some of this, he, like, I think it was Bill Landis. He asked if he, if uh, he knew what the Penn state sack record was and he like knew it right away. And he's like, are you gunning for that? And he's like, yeah, I think it was like 16 or 17 sacks, something ridiculous. And I I think there's a confidence about him. And th- again, this is preseason. We're going to know a lot more week seven, week eight. I, I, I think what you're saying really rings true. I just, th- to me, I'm not sure there's another edge rusher like him in terms of athleticism. And I think that's, you know, that's, that's part of it. I, I want to go to your thoughts. Also, oh, oh, one second, really fast. also he's also on the other end with denied Dennis Sutton, who is also a fantastic edge rusher as mm-hmm. well. So, I mean, those two guys together, if we're talking about Jack Sawyer and uh, JT Tulum, oh, wow. There has to be a little okay. bit of that with Abdul Carter and deny Sutton too. Uh, I mean, right. Am I right? Or you think that's yeah. Oh yeah. Off. Okay. Yeah. I, well, but I think both of them, I think my, so my concern and and you can correct me on this if you think I'm 
completely off, but I feel like Tui Moloau and Sawyer are not as I don't feel like pass rushing is necessarily their strength. Like I think they're just really oh, yeah. good overall defensive ends. Smart um, in the right place, yeah. know how to hand fight. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a reason why they're talking about bringing CJ Hicks off the edge, bringing Sonny Styles on blitzes, rotating Kenyatta Jackson in. Whereas I think I I think there's a real possibility that uh Sutton and Carter might be the two best that might that might be the best tandem of pass rushers that Could we be. have. And you know, I was thinking about when Chase Young and Nick Bosa were together for that glorious three game stretch before Bosa got hurt. And I, I mean, it was just like like death for every quarterback. Was that and the TCU game that he I got injured in? Was so angry. Yeah. So ang- but like I could see where you have this. It doesn't matter that there's two of them. They're they're both going to eat. And I yeah. could see that Carter actually gets more of the, like he gets more of the eating. Um, I think to your, to going back to your list, I, so I really wrestled with Dylan Thieneman and Ricardo Hallman. And the thing that I was really wrestling with is, are they going to get enough? I think actually similar to what you were saying is like, are they going to get enough publicity you know, I'm I'm concerned that Purdue's going to not go to a bowl. I think Wisconsin's going to be good. I'm not sure they're going to be great. So hey, we like, picked them for nine and three, man. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I on my show on on my show, I did not pick them to go. But I ha- no, I have that to was my belief. Here. I do think they're going to be good. Um, I think if they're nine and three, actually, Ricardo Holman is probably going to be a big part of that. And right, I, that was one of their issues last year with Ricardo Holman is they just they didn't have the hype. Now you know Dylan Thieman won Freshman of the Year last year, and Purdue wasn't very good at all. What four wins yeah. last year? So I mean, it can happen. You can win these awards and your team not be good. Um, but I tend to agree with you. I feel like if the Purdue second, if the Purdue defense takes a step. I don't think it's all going to be because of Dylan Thieneman. I think that Kydron Jenkins, he's on my watch list as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Nyland Green coming in from Georgia. Really good. Player. I think those guys are going to be huge to make that happen. But if the defense does take a leap and gets them to six or seven wins, you're going to be looking at Dylan Thieneman with all the love and all the admiration for like, look at this, what guy, you know, all American was able to do coming in. That's I think that's a really, that's the story, the story that will get Thieneman not just up like rising up the list that will win him the award unless if Caleb Downs or Abdul Carter or Will Johnson have like a monster year. I agree. Uh, let's talk Jay Higgins for just a second. And, and Brian did mention kind of what we were talking about could open things up for Sunny style and CJ Hicks to put up some good numbers. Yes. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, those guys coming off the edge and pass rushing. I wanted to bring that up because we said the thing about the pass rushing between Jack and JT and, uh, Sunny Styles and CJ Hicks might be able to get some good numbers. Uh, I do want to bring up Jay Higgins. I really, really like Jay Higgins. He had a ton of tackles last year. I think he led uh, the Big Ten, was close to leading the nation as well. And then uh, and then after we talk about Jay Higgins, we'll talk about some of the guys, because there's a lot of really good defensive players, dude. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll talk about some of the guys that maybe didn't make our list that we wish could be in our top ten. Um, but Jay Higgins, like, what's your thoughts on Jay Higgins? Like, is he even able to win this award? I mean, he had a fantastic year last year and he didn't win it. So like, is he going to be able to win this award? What are your thoughts? I, I think it really depends. Does he flash in the big games? And, you know, can they, I, I think they'd have to go 11 and one. And I think Jay Higgins would have to be part of the reason why. Like you're talking interceptions because Iowa guys have won it in the past. I think it was, uh, was it Chad Greenway that Jack won Campbell won it in and 2022. It. I was just thinking that same thing. When was the last time Iowa won yeah, it? And then not that far, not that long ago. Dev- Devion Nixon. Da- Davion Nixon. I apologize. I'm probably butchering that. That's all right. And then Josie Jewell in 2017 yeah so it's almost so, been like almost every two years and iowa players won it so yeah. maybe he's due <laughs> yeah well and i think i think there's pedigree like iowa linebackers are studs and jay higgins is already you know returning all american like leading tackler i think he's just he's got to be the impact guy 
um, particularly in some of the big games. Like I think he has to show up against Ohio State, even if they don't win that game. He's got to show up in that game. He's got to be, you know, involved in every game on on the nationally televised games, like with with Minnesota, with Wisconsin, and like those games he has to show up with Nebraska. Like that that would be I think a key one actually is against Nebraska. He's got to be the guy sacking Rayola and picking him off. So I think that's his pathway. So it's there. I th- I think he can win it for sure. Um it just I think a lot the thing that's going to work against him is everybody knows how weak Iowa's schedule is. So if they go 10 and 2 I think most people are going to be like, okay, cool. Yeah, I think it'll just be how he performs in their biggest games, right? Like, I don't think schedule matters as much. I do think it matters, to your point. I don't think it matters as much for these player awards as, like, sometimes it does for, like, college football playoffs and stuff like that. But at the same time, like, he is going to have very few chances to have that moment to win this award. It's going to be games like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Nebraska. And, like, those are big games to us. But they might not be big games to people nationally, which yeah. is a shame because those are fantastic rivalry games that, you know, people in the big 10 know about. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it, to, to the big 10 sickos, right. You know, they, they might see it uh, with what he does, but you're right without so many big games that get played on the national stage, people might not see it and think of it as consistently. Yeah. He, What'll get lost in the shuffle is if he has a really good year and a solid year and ha- even has a big game against Minnesota, Caleb Downs has three picks against Oregon. Like it's not going to matter. True. Well, Johnson has two picks or, uh, you know, pick six against Ohio state or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. It's over. And, yeah. and I think that's the disadvantage of even Thieneman, Tyreen Powell, Jay Higgins, like all these guys, the bigger names, if they have a big game in a, a high, you know, high, I can't think of the, the name, big time game. There we yeah. go. Like breakout game. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That's going to be tough. That's going to be tough to overcome. The only way I think they overcome it is if it's a one-off like JT to him. LOL. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, all right, let's talk about some of the guys on our list that maybe we would like to mention but didn't get a chance to talk about too much just because it is so full. Uh, I'll give you a few, Zach, then I'll let you, I'll let you have a few and there's any more that uh, I want to talk about. Kenneth Grant, another reason, one of those defensive tackle guys that's fantastic, mm-hmm. but it's just the defensive tackle position doesn't doesn't often win yeah. this award. Yep. Uh, Jack Sawyer, he was actually my number 12, so uh, had him there. Jabbar, Jabbar Muhammad, well, you had him on yours. I had him 13th. Uh, Xander Nwampaka, mm-hmm. however you pronounce that name. <laughs> uh, Hunter Wohler. Hunter Wohler is Nwampa. a very... Yeah, Wampa. Uh, Hunter Wohler is a very uh, underrated player for this award. If he has another huge tackle season like he had last year he could be considered again and then uh well i'll stop there and i'll see if you have any more zach before i continue yeah one one very under the radar guy uh, xander mueller out of northwestern i think he was the next guy i was gonna name and i'm like i think (laughs) Zach's gonna talk about him yeah and i think you know to him like if he if he can put it together Like if he has a three sack game against, if he has a game like he does again against Penn state and then follows it up with games where he is wrecking teams. Like, I think he's certainly a guy to watch out for. Um, Another guy that, you know, if Rutgers has the season that we think they're going to have Robert Longerbeam, um, you know, our our man, Larry uh, over at night watch, he said that he thought he was the best corner even better than Max Melton a year ago. And so he's like, Max Melton got all the hype, but Robert Longerbeam was really our better, our best corner. Yeah. My, my uh, other records player I was going to mention was Aaron Lewis um, on the mm-hmm. defensive line, but yeah, um, the, the corner you mentioned there. 
as well is also a very good uh, one to mention. Michigan State, Wayne Matthews the third, he could have a very big season, do really well. Uh, Deny Dennis Sutton we talked about. Uh, Bear Alexander has to be in that discussion there. Unfortunately, again, just defensive tackle, not, not going to win yeah. this award very often. Uh, James Carpenter, Tommy Hill. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. Trying to make sure I don't miss anybody. Ja Joyner from Minnesota. You know, he could he could step up and do some good stuff here. So, all right. I just want to make sure I mention some of those names because, you know, I don't want anybody to think I'm not thinking of your player on your team or whatever. So, all right, Zach, any final comments on defensive players before we move on to coaches? I, I just think it's an exciting year. Like, I, I, I would hate for people to look at the defense – you know, the defenses this year and think, oh, the Big Ten just stinks on offense. Like these, like legit defenses in the Big Ten this year. Yeah. Yeah. They have some very legit defenses and it's going to be hard picking for this award. It's, I mean, yep. there's going to be so many good players for it. So, yeah. All right. Uh, Coach of the Year rankings. We're going to get to that here in just a moment.